Hi guys, my name is Juanjo and I will show you the engine of my E46 from the 99 which has the M52TU engine uh, which is quite different from the M54 and I will highlight through this video all those differences. So, the main difference between these, uh, these engines, the M M52 TU and the M54, is uh, one the fuel rail, which it has, uh, which has two lines instead of just one, and the second is the throttle valve that obviously we cannot see it he, uh, it's, it's down there. And uh, because it's cable driven, and um, on all the other engines, um, the throttle valve works with a servo motor connected to the throttle pedal. Uh, in this case, it's not like that. Actually, you can hear. You can see here. This is the cable of the throttle, which goes directly to the valve. So. I almost forgot there is another difference between the en this engine and the M54, which is this. This, this are, this is the housing from the uh, vacuum for the um, for the brake. Uh, on the M54 engine, you will find this part uh, on the bottom of the intake manifold. Well, the reason why I needed to unmount the intake manifold was the starter motor um, everything began a couple months ago with uh, a faulty ICB valve uh, this is a typical fault for this kind of vehicle with this mileage so um, I needed to clean it to make it work properly and then the starter motor broke so I needed to change it but um, in this car, in this engine in particular, um, the limp mode of the engine doesn't work as on the M54, and that's because we have a cable. When you have electronics on the throttle valve, um, the engine limits the maximum revs by the computer. In this case, you have you have your foot connected to the to the carburetor so you cannot do that so there's there's not there's no limp mode in this car somehow and um, so I realized that something was going bad when I tried to accelerate the car and it was like misfiring but not misfiring like it was has not enough fuel to run and but uh, then I read the codes and I have the code for the um, some intake manifold problem. I will I will link on the description the, the right code and the problem. And so everything pointed to that valve. So after I clean that valve and I make sure that it worked properly, I have no problems. But I still have a problem with the diesel valve, which is this one because. This, uh, the diesel valve is in great shape, but uh, isn't the uh, diaphragm. You have here a membrane which uh, allows all the system to work, which broke, and it's really, really hard to find. At least here in Italy, it's almost impossible. So the car now is running with uh, this faulty valve, but I'm sure I could. Uh, <coughs> I will find a replacement for that and I will make a video also on that. So now let's begin with the amounting of the engine. I will take apart all the intake manifold. This is quite easy to do. I will not show you this process and we will reach the um, ICV valve. And I had a, a really hard time trying to get off this cable from here because I cannot take this plate which is the support of the ICB valve so now as you can see the cable is off mm, my mistake was to take off these bolts which are the supports for the ICB plate I put them again 
I pry with the screwdriver and I just the cable just pop up so that's the answer so I managed to pull out the ICB bulb and you can see here clearly the cable of the throttle bulb the throttle bulb you can actually I don't know if I, you can see it I can move it with my fingers quite difficult with one hand here and that's how it works very very old school but I like it so I took the ICB valve off and as you can hear it seems kind of work I don't know if you can see here that's it you can see some debris on the valve so maybe this was the cause that the P5005 I think was the error I can recall right now maybe that's the reason uh, why I was having those codes so I'm gonna clean this with carburetor cleaner and let's see how it goes well I spray <coughs> a couple of times a couple of times inside the bulb um, always trying uh, to not to spray the upper part this part here because uh, I read somewhere that there is a, a bushing here on, on a bearing I really can tell and if you spray it you can ruin it so I'm trying to spray on the majorly on the bottom part of the valve and as you can see now I don't know if you can see it but it's really really sensitive which each small movement I make it moves so and obviously makes this rattling noise which is good for this valve so cool I think I fix it just to finish with the ICB valve part I wanted to show you the support of the valve and see how different it is from the M54 engine you we have here in this part this is the support for the cable of the throttle valve uh, which is the big difference regarding the M54 engine so I just pull out the throttle body from the intake manifold and as you can see here uh, the plug that switches inside the um, uh, throttle body is completely different than the um, M54 engine and in this case I need just to twist that and then pull it off and what I did is just uh, first take the carburetor out and then unplug this switch so this is the car carburetor of the car uh, that's where this plug goes in and I found this mm, I don't know if you can see it properly but this all like red inside I don't know if that's good or not I will try to clean it well we can see here another of the differences between the M64 um, and 52 TU engine we can see here that the common ray has two uh, lines and they are connected down here with other two lines the M64 engine has just one these two lines down there that we are seeing here are the send and the return of the common rail. Now, this is plug there. As you can see, when I move the common rail, the tubes, tubes are moving. They were fixed on the rear part on the, of the intake, intake manifold with some kind of clip. I cannot see it yet, but when I take off the intake manifold we will have a clear see well I finally managed to take off the intake manifold uh, 
I have some problems, but I cannot show you now because now it's everything uh, apart. But uh, I couldn't take the mainfold off because the cable from the starter was locking the um, the that this clamp over here it was a very stupid thing but I spent like half an hour maybe an hour trying to figure out what was happening so I take this the banding full off and I begin uh, stripping out the clamps that go here and I just realized well this is another difference difference from the M64 engine because you will find here all uh, these things <laughs> this kind of uh, D on the M64 engine is below the intake manifold so once you take the intake manifold out you need to cu cut out the clamps and then replace them but uh, I realized uh, after I <laughs> cut off that clamp my butt that I could just cut this one and take all apart so this is part of the M uh, 62 52TU engine which is really really cool so now the intake manifold is uh, off and we can have a clear sight of the bottom part we can see here the starter motor which already took off from the bolts and we can see a detail of the common rail and in this case different from the M54 um, engine we have two fuel line, lines ascend and a return uh, in this case I let all the all the hoses connected because I didn't need to take it off to, in order to take off the intake manifold so uh, the other particular thing on the M52 engine is are the bolts that, that support the uh, starter engine on the M54 uh, engine are E12 in this case they are E14 so now I want to show you how I took off those bolts. This is the wrench that I use. I put a lot of WD-40 on the bolts and then just from the back, as you can see like this, you can put your key here and just loose those bolts. Okay, so now I clean all the bottom part uh, of the engine below the starter motor and clean also the contacts and now we'll put the new uh, starter motor in. So now all the parts are completely clean. I took off all the carbon that was um, attached to the surface and I clean it just with the rack. Uh, I used my, my nail to take off the carbon, it was quite easy. Now it's all set for the intake manifold. So, just a little tip uh, to mount the intake manifold. I was trying to, <coughs> I was trying to uh, put on place the clip that holds the cable that goes on the lower support on the intake manifold, and uh, it's it's impossible from here. Unfortunately, I need to take off the intake manifold clamp that cable and then put it again so I already installed the intake manifold I torque all the nuts on the inlets and ports and also the nut on the bottom part and just one thing when I assembly all the intake manifold I left the uh, ICD valve on because I thought it would be easier to mount but uh, now that I'm mounting the carburetor it will be much much more easier if the ICD valve was off so maybe the next time I will do it that way so as you can see now is <coughs> everything mounted just 
I need to mount the this valve and that's it and now I am mounting the common rail and as you can see I'm installing the injectors with the clamps you can see it there uh, with the common rail not in the final position this is this makes the job quite easy because because we can check if we install properly the injector so I prefer to do it this way okay so this is the final result everything worked well and um, just a couple of things I obviously changed all the gaskets from the intake manifold I also changed the o-ring from the dipstick in this case I use uh, not the original dimensions because I couldn't find it but I uh, use some standard that is equivalent and it works well. I will put the description uh, of this part on the description of this video. And well, I think that's it. Thanks for watching.